All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for my official AFL Finals 2020 predictions. Did I get the order of that right? I don't know. So if you've been following my weekly tips videos throughout the year, you know the drill. We're going to be using squiggle.com, the predictor, to go through the finals game by game up to the grand final to see who I think will win the 2020 Premiership. Now, the analysis in this video is going to be fairly surface level uh, because I'm just going to be going game by game and picking who I think will win as a bit of a fun sort of challenge. But if you want to see some slightly more knowledgeable and in-depth analysis, go check out our official 2020 Finals preview video. It's about 15 minutes from memory. Earlier on this channel, it was like two videos ago. I'll leave the link to that in the description so you can see a little bit more fleshed out what we think is going to happen. So every year, like throughout the season, there are going to be surprises throughout the finals. I think 2018, I got very, very close to being bang on. I think I tipped Richmond to beat West Coast in the grand final. So effectively, the only one I really got wrong was uh, that Collingwood actually smashed Richmond in the prelim, which I think very, very few people saw coming. And then last year, GW West put Brisbane out in straight sets and then upset the Pies at the MCG. Another result that was very, very hard to see coming other than Richmond winning the flag. So I'll try and juice this one up a little bit so it's different from just picking the favorite every game because undoubtedly there is going to be at least one surprise in this final series. In fact, I would be disappointed if there wasn't. But enough about that. Let's have a look at the top eight. We know the order. It's Port, Brisbane, Richmond, and Geelong, who undoubtedly were the top four best teams this year, in my opinion. West Coast, as I can't remember if I've said this on camera or not, but I feel like they're clearly the fifth best team. Definitely not quite as good as the four teams above, but I feel like they've proven themselves to be levels above St. Kilda, the Dogs, and Collingwood. St. Kilda and the Bulldogs are sixth and seventh, and Collingwood, I'm pleased to see, scraped into that top eight. I would have been disappointed to see them miss out because I think they're a great team and definitely have the potential to do some damage in this final series. So obviously the first matchups of the finals are Port versus Geelong in Adelaide, West Coast versus Collingwood in Perth, St. Kilda and the Bulldogs at the Gabba, I believe, and Brisbane versus Richmond also at the Gabba. So pleasingly, despite having a corona-affected season, only one game of the finals is not where it should be, and that's St. Kilda and the Bulldogs at the Gabba. And on the plus side of that, it's a genuinely neutral game. Uh, it's not like St. Kilda have to host a Queensland team in Queensland. So it all kicks off with Port Adelaide versus Geelong at Adelaide Oval. This is going to be a great contest between two of the genuine best sides of the comp this year. It's hard to split that top four, really. Uh, but Port Adelaide at home especially, you have to give them a big sniff. Earlier in the season, we know Geelong hosted them at, uh, I think it was the Gabba or Metricon, I can't remember. It was in Queensland. And absolutely put Port Adelaide to the sword. They won by 10 goals. But I wonder how much to really put into that game, how much stock to put into that, because Port Adelaide have been consistently good all year and had just beaten Richmond the week before. And sometimes when a team has a big win, one week, the following week, they struggle to motivate themselves and get back up. So I'll give them a little bit of a pass for that one. At home in front of a crowd of like 25,000 people, I'm going to say the power get the job done. I hope they do for my boy Anthony. They're going to go through to a home prelim straight off the bat. Next up is West Coast versus Collingwood. This is not in chronological order. I'm just reading it as my screen because I know that's the Saturday night game. West Coast versus Collingwood. Um, I feel like West Coast has clearly been better this year. Um, and both sides have been injury like smashed. I think Collingwood probably had it worse, to be honest, with the amount of unavailable players they had throughout the year. And both sides are getting a lot of these players back. So I'm expecting a really good game. These two teams have a great rivalry built on mutual respect. I don't know how Pies fans feel or other West Coast fans, but I feel like I genuinely... We sort of almost have like a weird connection because we played in such a historically great grand final. And I genuinely hope the Pies do well. Not this week, however. I hope they get absolutely thumped. But I don't think it will be how they played earlier in the season where West Coast kicked like 18 goals three and kicked, uh, well, one by like 10 goals. And I think that really was kind of the decline of Collingwood from that point. Because at the start of the year, I thought they looked like the benchmark team of the comp. So I'm expecting a very strong Collingwood side. I'm also expecting a very motivated and strong West Coast side. West Coast pissed off to miss the four two years in a row. I think they're going to come out and they're going to put the Pies not to the sword, but it's going to be a great contest. I think we'll win by like 16 points. Next up is the Gabba contest between St. Kilda and the Bulldogs. And I'm glad these two sides 
went into the finals playing each other first because I feel like they're on a very similar level. St. Kilda have had a great season. Um, we've seen what they can do with uh, A, a better coach, clearly. Brett Ratton's done a great job. And B, better injury like last year. They were one of the most injury-ravaged sides. And they've certainly been one of the most underrated teams but have constantly, other than a few blips, like against West Coast, I've talked about that. That's a bad loss. But generally speaking, they've been able to subvert expectations a little bit and be you know, much better than people uh, gave them respect for, including myself. The Bulldogs, by contrast, though, I feel like a bit more of a sleeping giant team. They've got the finals experience, which the Saints don't. They've got that elite engine room, which I think St. Kilda are still adding to. I don't feel like they have the star power that the Bulldogs have. And it does appear that Aaron Norton, who's an important avenue to goal for the Dogs, is going to be fit for that game, I do believe. This is a tough one. I, I like both teams. I hope the Saints win because of how much uh, Saints fans have bagged me for not tipping this year. Although, I think somebody did the math. I think Log Dog did the math. I did tip St. Kilda eight times out of 18. That's not too bad. Look, long story short, though, Saints definitely have the potential to win this. I'm going to go the conservative safe bet and say the Dogs win because I feel like there's a lot more pressure on them for a start. St. Kilda have... They're almost pleased to be in the finals because it's been so long and they've had a great season, whereas the Dogs are probably thinking, you know, we finished sixth or what it was at seventh this year, actually. That's a bit of an underachievement for the momentum they finished with the season with last year. And um, yeah, I, th I feel like the Dogs are going to be too good. Sorry, Saints fans. Next up, we've got a repeat of last year's qualifying final. And in fact, I think it's Brisbane's worst nightmare matchup, to be honest, because Richmond just, for whatever reason, just have the absolute wood on this team. We know they're suited to Queensland conditions, that helps, but they seem to beat them wherever they are. And also, Richmond are probably the form team at the comp coming into the finals. And, you know, having won two of the last three flags and a minor premiership in between, they certainly have a strong reputation. I feel bad for Brisbane because they've done so well to get a top two finish a second year in a row. They've proven they're such a good team only to come up in the first qualifying final and have to play the team that I would say definitely has the wood on them. Now, what have Brisbane have for them this year is some finals experience, an extra year of maturity into quite a young team with a lot of young talent that is still kind of proving itself. But, you know, with an extra year now, they'll be more prepared for this final series and they'll have that I don't know if it will help them, but you've got that more data on Richmond now, looking at the exact ways that Richmond has broken them down over the last couple of years, uh, which they didn't have in the last couple of times they've played them. I think kicking was a, goal kicking was a real problem for them in that game as well. So, you know, if they do have a straight day in front of goals, a straight day in front of goals, uh, maybe they do win. I'm going to say Richmond are going to win. I think Richmond are the best team in the comp. And they love the Gabba and playing Brisbane. It's the safe bet. I hope Brisbane win, but I think Richmond's going to win. That sets up two semis of Geelong and West Coast, and then Brisbane and the Bulldogs. So again, it's a repeat of last year, Geelong hosting the West Coast Eagles this time, of course, not at the MCG, but at, uh, well, it would be interesting to see where they prefer. I don't know where they would actually pick to ho host this game uh, between the Gabba or Metricon. I'm going to assume they don't pick South Australia, which I'm sure they're able to choose, uh, but the Queensland makes sense because of that's where they've located. Earlier this year, we had one of the games of the season, I thought, between West Coast and Geelong, where Geelong came to Perth, led the led the game all day. Uh, I think they got four goals in front in shortened quarters. That's a fairly handy lead, and West Coast really arm wrestled them back and uh, ended up winning the game in an absolute classic. This game's not in Perth, however. It's going to be in Queensland where the Eagles aren't suited to. This is a tough one for me, and this is going to sound so silly, and it, I'm... This is lame that this is part of my analysis, but I generally think it matters a lot if this game is played during the day or at night because the Eagles do not play on their terms when the game is a little bit greasy. For whatever reason, 2018, we became a gun-contested side in the last seven weeks of 2018 and helped win the flag without Nat Nui, who really helps us, um, obviously in the clearance stakes and stuff like that. But before that, we were like bottom two for ground ball gets and contested possessions and stuff like that. Maybe I'm just hoping the Eagles bring that side out of them. If this game is in the day, I'm actually thinking the Eagles are a good chance, but it's most likely going to be at night, it, to be honest. This is probably going to be a Friday night clash. That being said, I'm going to absolutely piss off so many of you, and I'm going to pick my own team here. I think the Eagles, even though they're not as good a team as Geelong, they're going to come out and upset the Cats in greasy conditions or not and they're going to win. And that sends them through to a prelim and it would put Geelong out in straight sets. Now, is this wishful thinking? Absolutely. But I did say I was going to pick an upset. Why not make it a bias call? I'm pretty good at not tipping the Eagles uh, where I don't think they'll win. So as I said, I think Geelong are definitely a top two seed for this final series. But crazier things have happened. 
and I think they're going to go out in straight sets. Next up in the semi, Brisbane versus the Western Bulldogs. I remember a game earlier this year they played, a, would have been at the Gabba, I'm sure, but Brisbane would have hosted it, and it was actually a really good contest. The Bulldogs played really well and got done by four goals, so I'm hoping we get a game like that where both teams are sort of at uh, full capacity. These are two pretty experienced sides, kind of now, having played in, the, well, Brisbane in the last two final series. And, you know, obviously the Bulldogs have, you know, a smattering of premiership players in there as well. Again, maybe like the Eagles, you could apply the same logic. They've been in that finals mix for a while now, sort of like GWS last year as well. They might be angry. They might be ready for the contest, but I don't think they're going to be good enough to beat the Lions at home. And the Lions will refuse to go out in straight sets a second year in a row. So, I'm going to say the Lions beat the Dogs at the Gabba. That sets up two great prelims, I reckon. Port Adelaide hosting the Brisbane Lions first up at Adelaide Oval. Now, this is a golden opportunity for a team like Port Adelaide to make a grand final. They've been wonderful all year. This is a home ground advantage. Teams that win the first home final and then get the bye and then host the prelim are virtually, not guaranteed, but you've got such a golden platter opportunity to make the grand final. But they're coming up against a hungry side in Brisbane who I think will want to prove themselves, especially, you know, obviously straight sets last year. It's a little bit of a talk of the narrative of obviously having played the football season in their state. They need to come out and prove that they can win it anywhere. And I think they're going to do just that. I'm going to tip an upset kind of, because I think Brisbane are a, a stronger side. But in this is obviously a Port Adelaide home game. I'm going to say Brisbane come out and make amends for their disappointing final series last year. And they're going to be hungrier and I'm sorry, Anthony, but I think the Brisbane Lions will win the away prelim to secure a grand final spot at home. Next up, we've got a prelim between Richmond and the West Coast Eagles. These guys did play earlier this season. I think it was at Metricon. I'm not really too sure where Richmond would prefer. I think their record at the Gabba off the top of my head is pretty good. But to be honest, they've been good generally in Queensland, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't really think Richmond really care where this game's going to be played. Again, this game is in the day. I give the Eagles a much bigger sniff, uh, but it's probably going to be at night. And either way, let's face it, we're coming up against Richmond, who I've talked about it all year. I think Richmond are the best team, and they're such a professional side at getting ready for the final series at that crucial time. They would have had a week off in this instance, wouldn't have had to travel. And in, in a sense, this is kind of like, an actual home prelim for them. They're kind of suited to that. We saw when these two teams played each other. I thought West Coast were really good for three and a half quarters. I wouldn't, maybe not matched Richmond, but really put up a good fight. And it was half a quarter. I think it was early in the third term where Richmond came out and ended the game. I'm sure my boys will put up a good fight, but they're not quite good enough to push Richmond all the way uh, in Queensland away from home in a prelim. Uh, this is where the fairy tale ends for me. Richmond will probably beat the Eagles fairly easily in that prelim. So this sets up a rematch between Brisbane and Richmond at the Gabba, where Richmond have so regularly beaten the Lions. It's a replay of that first qualifying final. This will be a night game as well. Richmond, again, suited the conditions. But again, I think they're just the best team in the comp. And Brisbane, they'll put up a good fight in front of a home crowd. It will probably pack out, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're allowing 30,000 or is it 38,000? What's the capacity? 38,000. Are they letting in the whole... It doesn't really matter. There's 30, 30 plus thousand uh, people in the stands cheering home the Lions. But I'm going to say Richmond are too good. On the big stage, they're going to get the job done and be premiers back-to-back, -back, which pains me because I'm sick of talking about Richmond as a premiership team. It will be three out of four years. I'm praying for any other result. I am really, really sick of Richmond in general. But that being said, that's not to be confused with a disrespect because what they've achieved... Uh, particularly under Hardwick, who's really rebuilt this team from being one of the worst teams in 2010. Uh, there was talk of them going into a winless season. To think about where he's taken this club some 10 years later, if they win three out of four with a minor premiership in between, we're talking about them on a similar level to Geelong, Hawthorne, and Brisbane as an absolute dynasty team. So there you have it, guys. That is my prediction. I think Richmond's going to be premiers again. They're going to beat Brisbane at their home deck at the Gabba. Hope to see you guys join us. We're probably going to live stream at least one game a week. I'm thinking at this stage for the elimination final, we're going to do a double header Saturday and do the Saints and the Dogs backing onto West Coast and Collingwood. And then we'll probably do one game a week following that up into the grand final, which we will definitely do. I'm not sure about the brown low yet. But anyway, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Appreciate you watching. There's going to be plenty of football content about, you know, the finals and obviously trade period as well as October progresses. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.